I cleaned Sparky's tank. Looks much better. Oops. Come on, straighten out. Ah, that filter thing. Anyway, much better. And I put the uh, the heater. I don't think goldfish need heater, but I don't want it to be too cold for him. It is starting to get cold at night, down into the 50s Fahrenheit. Somebody has it out for me at work. Probably more than one person. But uh, this guy is... Uh, He's uh, in a position where he can cause a lot of trouble. And I think he's caused a lot of trouble for other teachers and forced them to leave our department to go to, uh, to get jobs elsewhere or to go back home where they came from. He comes across as a meek and mild mannered person, but he's actually a fairly ruthless individual. Um, and uh, a single track mine. He's not the kind of person that likes alternative ideas. He'll take an alternative idea if, if the core of his idea is kept intact. You know, um, but he won't consider alternative ideas, you know, actual alternative ideas. So it's kind of a difficult work situation. Uh, we don't really have any academic freedom because we're not really teachers. Um, we have no authority. Uh, our jobs depend on whether the students, uh, whether we're popular with the students. Uh, we have to, every semester there's a popularity evaluation that goes out to the students and they have to fill out this popularity evaluation uh, before they can see their grades. So every student has to fill it out. And, uh, and if our popularity falls below a certain point, which I think is like 80%, maybe 75%, I'm not sure what it is, but if it falls below that, uh, we are in danger of losing our jobs. So, it's, working in Korea is becoming increasingly onerous. Is that the word I want? Um, so I want to be a teacher and I don't want to deal with this politics so this guy who was just kind of I don't know if he was given this authority or if he just assumed it I'm not sure but it's becoming almost impossible to work in our department because you have to do you have to do things the way he wants it done and he's ignoring all the research and tradition in English teaching in, uh, English teaching as a foreign language or English teaching as a second language. I follow traditional methods. Um, I read the research in this field and I've been reading research in this field ever since I got into it in 1997. I'm always reading about what's going on and, and uh, what teachers are discovering in this field. Uh, it's called TESOL, T-E-S-O-L, uh, Teaching English to Speakers of Other Languages. And it's a very interesting field but it has research and it has tradition and it, it has uh, the customary way of doing things which doesn't mean you can't do things differently than customarily or traditionally. But things are customary and traditional for a reason. They work. And what we've got now in our department where they're trying the, these novices who are not into this field, who just came here for a job. These novices are setting what the goals are and, and how we're going to reach them and the methodology we're going to use, etc. And they don't know what they're doing. So, I'm out of here at the end of this semester. I'm out of this place. I've drafted a letter to the dean, well, the new dean now, and I'm in the process of getting it translated into Korean because I don't know if he can understand English. And uh, just outlining why I'm leaving, uh, but, but I said earlier that uh, somebody has it out for me, and I think I know who it is, but I could be wrong, and it has to do with my YouTube channel. <laughs> yeah, my YouTube channel. They think that 
um, something on my YouTube channel was absolutely unacceptable uh, to the university. Well, that's what they're billing it as. I don't know how far it's gone. It has nothing to do with uh, me talking about Korea. You'd think, oh, sometimes I critique criti Korea. Sometimes I criticize Korean society. Apparently it has nothing to do with that. It has to do with um, my acceptance of naturism, naturalism. Uh, that I believe that nudity is fine. Public nudity is fine. That uh, um, I go to nudist campgrounds, things like that. Not in Korea. There are none in Korea. But when I'm on my time, on my vacation, in the United States of America, my homeland, I go to nudist campgrounds sometimes. And, but they think that reflects very badly on Duke University. So, I think that's the tack they're going to be using to make sure that I am not offered a contract for the next year. But I've been here five years, which means I cannot get any more raises, I can't get any more benefits or bonuses or anything. I've just, I've maxed out everything in five years. That's why after five years, uh, Korean schools, they lose their English teachers. Um, because there is no, there's no professional advancement for TESOL teachers here in Korea. It's, uh, after five years, you've gotten everything they're ever going to give you. So, we just leave. Um, Koreans are not very smart about resources like that, especially human resources. And uh, they take advantage of what resources they get and they abuse what resources they get. So they lose them. But people coming to Korea to teach English, they're a dime a dozen. They're not qualified, they're not trained, they're not experienced. But I get the impression the Koreans don't care. They just want warm English-speaking bodies in the classrooms and that's not going to teach them English. That's not going to help their country become bilingual. But I don't think they care. <laughs>